Look at the tiny brains as small as lizard eggs. These are actually mini brains that developed in the lab. They can instantly learn anything. That's scientists who created mini brain. They have made them listen to 240 variations of eight male voices. And he recognized all 240 voices with almost 80% accuracy in just two days of training. Just imagine that you may not be good at math, but you need a brain as fast as Einstein's. Now these fast mini brains can make this a reality for you. Simply install these mini brains in your body, calibrate them, and then spend a few days training your new brain for maths to become a genius. Well, only AI can do all this right now. So because of this technology, is this finally the time where we can learn any skill just like AI within a second? How does this technology really work? How do these mini brains learn information? And finally, how will this new mini brain fit in our brain? We will discuss all this in today's video, but before moving on, there is a problem with it, haven't you noticed? A lot of information processing is already happening in our brains. And because of this processing, we are able to do everyday tasks with ease. And if we dedicate a small part of our brain to just one thing, then obviously due to the limited size of our skull, some of the remaining parts will have to be compromised and maybe some functions can be compromised. So what does it mean to become smart? If our goal is to become extra smart, then to meet that goal, we have to sacrifice our other abilities like memory, emotion, and creativity. So before we start analyzing this, let's understand the purpose behind creating a mini brain. In today's time, medical science has advanced so much that we can analyze any organ of our body. Apart from keeping him alive, we can also transplant him to another patient. But despite so much advancement, our brain is the only organ that we cannot able to transplant or keep alive from outside the body. To keep the brain alive, it is important to know precisely how each part of the brain functions. However, even with advanced technologies like CT scans and MRIs, we still haven't fully comprehended this, even after conducting experiments on the brains of other animals. Therefore, in 2013, Scientists at Austria's Institute of Molecular Biotechnology thought, why not we create a brain from scratch and study it? That is why they extracted stem cells from the human body, because stem cells give birth to other cells in the body. To make these cells, chemicals known as growth factors are required. After that, they transform into particular types of cells, such as skin cells, brain cells, and heart cells. One of these growth factors is the noggin stem, which transforms cells, particularly into brain cells. Scientists have injected noggin growth factor into stem cells and placed them in conditions very similar to those of our bodies. Just like our blood, with the help of liquid, they provide nutrients to the steam cells. And to mimic the body temperature, they put the cell into the incubator. After this process, they waited for three to four days and discovered that some stem cells unfortunately died. However, the cells that survived successfully germinated, transformed into neurons, and formed brain tissues as small as the tip of a pen. With positive results, they extended the experiment for a few more days, and after 60 days, they observed a dramatic increase in the size of the brain cells. Plus, they also started seeing structures like the midbrain and forebrain. At this point, scientists successfully created a mini-brain. But do these mini-brains even work? Well, to find out, first, we need to translate the electrical impulses of our brain to determine if we can able to communicate with them or not. So for this, scientists have designed a microchip capable of communicating with the mini brains through electrical impulses. These microchips can transmit electrical information to the mini brains, translating the signals into impulses. This enables us to receive signals from the mini brains in the form of responses. After establishing effective communication with the mini brains, they started training these brains. In the first step of training, they continuously fed eight different male voices in the form of electrical signals for two days. This allowed them to understand the differences in the patterns of the voices. Once this was completed, it was time to test whether the mini brains actually understood anything or not. For this test, scientists converted the eight male voices into 240 different audio clips and narrated them to the mini brains. They observed that the same patterns formed in the mini brains for the sounds that were being formed during training. The scientists also observed that in eight out of 10 audio clips, the mini brains accurately identified the voices and sent back signals corresponding to the same voice. 
That means in just two days of training, he was able to recognize the voices with almost 80% accuracy, which is a huge success if you think about it. When you listen to the songs of Taylor Swift, Billie Eilish, or even Justin Bieber, your brain immediately stores the memory of their voices in its database. And then it starts matching them with the incoming sounds, allowing you to accurately identify whose voice it is. This type of ability is typically found in AI-operated devices like Alexa and Siri, where we simply code the functionality. However, adding this capability to lab-created biological tissue is like something out of a sci-fi movie. Therefore, when scientists have achieved this lab-grown brain, so we can confidently that those mini-brains can also understand things and make decisions on their own. That is, they are indeed intelligent and maybe even conscious. As a science enthusiast, I believe this is a huge achievement. Consider this. We currently have VR cameras that mimic our sense of sight, microphones that work like our ears, and also touch sensors like mobile screens. They mimic our intended senses, but thus far we haven't been able to mimic major sensory organs like the nose and tongue. The reason for this is that these senses don't do the major work. It's our brain that does. This is why these two senses are highly subjective. For example, some people enjoy coffee while others do not. Some like stronger perfume, some like less. And from this perspective, as I mentioned earlier, replicating these senses is incredibly challenging. Yes, some scientists have attempted to replicate it. Like in 2011, a company created an electronic tongue that detects taste based on specific chemicals. It can determine if the amount of glucose is high, indicating sweetness, or if nitrogen levels are high, indicating bitterness. However, a fundamental question arises from this achievement. Imagine if someone's tongue were replaced with an artificial tongue. Could the artificial tongue be able to distinguish between a chocolate cake and ice cream as effectively as the original tongue? Well, no, because it is missing an important part. It is not connected with our brain. If the tongue is somehow connected to our brain, then how can we say that it has mimicked the sense of taste? And this is where the power of our mini brains comes into play. Just as mini brains have recognized different voices with the help of a microchip, exactly the same way we can move forward in making these brains to recognize taste and smell. By connecting these brain cells to devices like an electronic tongue, these electronic devices essentially become our sensory organs. This advancement will allow us to experience the taste or smell of things in a whole new way. Moreover, if we can eliminate the need for artificial noses and tongues, and instead use our phones to test the smell of the perfumes, we can further simplify this technology to use them. For example, you may have heard of wireless chargers that can charge electric devices through magnets, essentially transferring electrical energy by touch. Now imagine a wireless system installed in your smartphone where you can select a perfume online. When you choose to test it, your smartphone wirelessly transfers a certain electrical impulse to your brain, allowing you to experience the fragrance in real life. Well, do you feel that how much revolutionary technology it is? If these advancements continue to develop and become mainstream, then they have the power to be game changers. However, it's essential to address the current challenges and limitations before realizing their full potential. Earlier in the video, I said that these mini brains can think, but due to their small size, their thinking capacity is so low that even a human fetus in front of them will seem more intelligent. Secondly, based on previous experiments conducted on these mini brains, it has been observed that the majority of the processing is actually done by the microchip. Without it, the mini brain functions as nothing more than a collection of cells. However, the microchip on which this experiment is dependent is a machine, which is a breakdown, anytime and anywhere because there have been numerous incidents where machines intended to save lives have almost caused harm to the individuals using them. Heart pacemakers are a prime example, while they are designed to regulate the heartbeat through electrical signals. However, these pacemakers sometimes gave instructions to stop the heartbeat due to technical malfunctions. For example, once a 67-year-old heart patient Lynn Farley was given 60 times deadly shocks in one night by her pacemaker. One shock from a pacemaker is so painful that it feels as if someone has repeatedly slapped you on your chest, and she took 60 such shocks back to back. 
Enduring 60 such shocks consecutively caused her to faint before reaching the hospital. To keep him alive, doctors had to remove his faulty pacemaker. In another similar case, a patient named Perry encountered the same problem. He received shocks from his pacemaker, and he himself asked the doctors to remove it, even though he knew that he could not survive without the pacemaker. This means that we all trust pacemakers as much as we want. After all, it is a machine that can malfunction at any time like any other machine. Moreover, if such machines are implanted inside our bodies, imagine the sense of helplessness when you realize that the machine within you is causing trouble, yet you're unable to do anything about it. So what I mean to say is these mini brains working on microchips are still far from being called perfect. Until we have a solid application strategy in place, they cannot be safely launched for the mainstream. But this definitely hasn't stopped any scientists from working on it. Scientists are well aware of the potential of the technology and its medical applications in treatment of some mental disorders. Because in 2021, a very interesting experiment took place in which they injected some brain tissues into the brains of rats. Then they observed that after about three months, these lab-created brain cells form neural connections, just like rat brain cells, as if the artificial brain cells created in the lab had become a substitute for the real natural brain cells of rats. Now, I'm not sure if you've recognized its potential in society, but Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, dementia, and many other brain disorders are causing brain cells to die. However, this technology, at the very least, has the capability to cure them. As I mentioned earlier, your brain cells are created using your body's cells, so there's no question of cells not matching. So yes, with the help of a lab-grown brain, we could achieve a significant breakthrough in medical science. And now only time will tell what is the true potential of this technology, where we are trying to create brains artificially on the other side. Don't you think if any other human-like species exists in the universe, wouldn't they have already mastered such technology? And if they have, couldn't our universe potentially be an artificially created brain? Well, such mind-boggling findings have been made by scientists Franco Vaza and neurosurgeon Alberto Felitti. They conducted side-by-side -side comparisons of images of the universe obtained from brain scans in the James Webb Space Telescope. Then they observed such strange patterns in a universe that is similar to our brain. The same structures, the same connections are there, and the same activities are happening here according to the same laws of physics. So what does this imply? Could it be that our universe is a brain? Well, I have decoded the whole issue in detail in this video, which you can watch by clicking here. It is quite an interesting video. You will get to know about many fascinating things. If you like this video, then give a like. Subscribe to the channel so that you can never miss such interesting videos. See you next time. Till then, as always, stay curious and keep learning.